morning. Good morning, everyone. Uh, it's great to be back in Boston. I was a proud Boston resident for five years in the 90s. I like to say I was here for all the pain of the big dig and left just in time for all the benefits to get rolled out. But I did get to geek out on all the amazing you know, construction techniques that were deployed throughout the big dig, and it was kind of an exciting time to be here. But let's get on to the topic of the day. Our planet has a finite supply of materials, of energy, of skilled workers, and the pandemic exposed weaknesses across the entire manufacturing ecosystem. Manufacturers had to realign and reimagine their supply chains, and they had to do it in real time while learning how to create more resilient supply chains that were actually future shock proof. Now, this caused a surge that we're seeing right now of onshoring and nearshoring, bringing manufacturing processes closer to the United States. Now, this coupled with investments from the government in critical things like the CHIPS Act has resulted in an 80% increase in manufacturing construction spending in the US in the last 12 months. That actually translates to a 200% increase in the number of factories that are being built. It's a pretty incredible number. So we're actually in the middle of a boom. Hopefully we do it right and not wrong. So we're seeing skyrocketing growth in this sector, but alongside it, we're seeing skill gaps widen. It's now estimated that there will be 2.1 million unfilled manufacturing jobs by 2030. 2.1 million. Okay. Now add to that increased inflation and all the concerns around that and the geopolitical environment, and it's no surprise that more than three quarters of you see the landscape as more uncertain now than you did three years ago. And you know what three years ago was like. And with the sudden implications of AI, they're looming large for us. What seemed distant has suddenly become imminent. So amidst all of this disruption, I think one thing is really, really clear. Though the uncertainty we're facing is accelerating, so is the technology available to us to confront it. And its importance to overcoming the capacity challenges all of you will be and are facing today. So you're juggling more software tools than you ever have before. They're coming at you from all sides. And the more tools you use, the more fragmented your time becomes. And it's not just your time, it's your project data that gets fragmented too. This leaves a lot of valuable information up in disconnected data sets. So it's natural to ask, is technology the solution or is it the problem? And really, it's true that both things can be true. If you do stick with the way you're doing things today, the current broken, disconnected processes, communication with multiple file types, formats, manual processes, the mix of digital and analog information, there's no doubt that technology is going to continue to be a challenge and not just a solution. Or you can start thinking about how you're going to digitize everything on the shop floor, harness the cloud when it's power of distributed data, and ultimately leverage AI. And technology will be a critical part of the solution for all of the things that you're facing. Now, the good news is, you know, especially uh, facilitated at conferences like this, most of us are on the right track. Digital transformation has accelerated, and it's across all industries, including manufacturing, but there is still a lot for all of us to do. There's a lot of things left untackled. And in a world of finite resources, we are all trying out how to harness the power of technology to do more with less. And we've heard that over and over again, but really, it's less labor, it's less resources, and it's less money. We're not just simply doing this to drive economic gain, though. The reality is that there isn't and there won't be enough labor, resources, or money to manufacture everything the world needs. Embracing digital transformation has become a requirement for manufacturers to thrive. Now, if it's used properly, digital technologies can help seamlessly manage the entire product manufacturing life cycle. And with this comes the promise of more automation, less manual work, and greater efficiency. Essentially, you know, the promise of doing more with less. Now, at Autodesk, 
We want to remove the friction you all face so that you can bring more of your time and more of your talent, your brains and your smarts, to the work you do. Now, when we started on this journey, we asked ourselves a few questions. The first one was, how might we lift people out of their silos? So this is all about bringing their valuable insights to the different teams that are working on a project and surfacing those. Another question we asked ourselves is, how might we unlock data from closed formats? Now, this will enable people to use information that they can access and use repeatedly across their entire job, when they need it and how they need it. And the last question we asked ourselves is, how do we connect the processes between tools and teams so that people don't have to spend their valuable time building manual workflows across various parts of the process? Now, when we started this journey, and we started it quite a while ago, we knew this wasn't going to be easy. There's a lot of complexity here, and it wasn't going to happen overnight. But there was no question that we were committed to this challenge and that we we're going to continue to be committed to this challenge. We were the first design and make company to bring integrated product development to the cloud, and we were the first to bring generative design to 3D modeling and computer-aided manufacturing. So companies like you have relied on us for decades for everything from machining to additive manufacturing to nesting to fabrication. So we play in every aspect of the design to make process in nearly every industry, from the Tesla driving down the street to the bridge it drives over to the visual effects in movies to the rockets we launch into space, not to over-index on Elon. Uh, Autodesk technology makes that possible. So our diverse customer base, and it is very diverse, we cover a lot of different places, combined with our comprehensive product portfolio, set us up to perfectly usher in a new era of manufacturing. Our single cloud-based platform connects every discipline and department from the shop floor all the way to the top floor. And it does it with professional design and manufacturing capabilities that work seamlessly together on a single source of truth. And that source of truth for Autodesk is Autodesk Fusion. Now, Fusion is end-to-end -end design and make processes coming together in the cloud with connected data and connected users. Now, this is going to be a very disruptive force in the industry. You see, the macroeconomic pressures, they are not going away. As, as we said earlier, you're all feeling more uncertain, not less. Unpredictable conditions will continue to demand dynamic responses. There's no doubt about it. We have to find new ways of working, new ways of designing, new ways of making, and new ways of operating. All those factories that are being built, they can't just be the same old factories. They have to be better, more innovative factories. This new way, the new standard, is going to be based on a connected system where data flows seamlessly from concept design all the way through to production and shipping. Connect those processes and you will gain competitive advantage. Now imagine overcoming the capacity challenges you face every day to actually deliver the product your customers want faster, cheaper, and on time. Back in the good old days, yeah, 10 years ago, the manufacturer with the best factory won. Soon, the manufacturer with the best ideas is going to win. And those ideas are going to be enabled and supported by technology, modern tools that deliver timely, relevant, usable information. And there's no place those insights are more important than on the factory floor. A digital factory represents more than the physical process of making things. It's a concept in which the factory itself figures into the equation. The goal of a digital factory is to optimize manufacturing processes and the environment that houses them. As manufacturers, you, you like to live in a constant state of evolution, and your factories have to keep up. This is why we've been connecting product design and make processes directly to machines on the shop floor. The relationship between the built environment and manufacturing operations is only deepening as more manufacturers build digital factories to help gain control of their supply chain and distribution. Now let's talk about this relationship for a moment. Uh, I think most of you know that building a factory involves a lot of stakeholders. 
It may be that you have production planners, building MEP engineers, architects, and they're all working on the same design. But planning processes are still segregated. segregated. Remember those silos I talked about earlier? They exist. These people who plan the machinery, they don't see the integrated model of the building or the ventilation or the water or the electrical systems. They often work from a drawing with rectangles that represent pillars and parallel lines that represent walls. Now, what does all this mean? If I want to give you a simple example that everyone can understand, if an architect moves a pillar in their tool, that same pillar isn't automatically moved in a production planner's tool. And that can mean a concrete pillar in the middle of an assembly line. Pretty simple example. There's other examples like that that can be multiplied over and over again throughout the process. What we see today is the manufacturing team ignoring the building model and the building team ignoring the manufacturing process because there's no system that can bring those two together. Unless, of course, you're working with Autodesk. You know, our strength in factory planning combined with our leadership in building information modeling allows us to digitize the entire factory, op factory operations thread, all the way from planning to design to building, to operating your digital factory. Now, typically, this is a linear process. Each group in their own silo, handing information off to the next, manually inputting data, and, and doing work already completed in early steps of the process. Now, we saw what can happen, concrete pillar, assembly line. But creating a digital connection enables this to become a circular process meaning you can test and validate your assumptions before breaking ground, saving you time, money, and a lot of headaches. And this is exactly why Magna, a tier one automotive supplier, moved to Autodesk from one of our competitors. Now, they were frustrated by heavily manual and siloed manufacturing processes. They wanted an integrated factory model solution. Now, they looked to us to enable them to collaborate between the building its infrastructure, and the production facilities with one single source of truth that could work for all of that. Now, having adopted Autodesk software, Magna leverages common data to accomplish a variety of tasks. Overall space planning for early stage conceptual building layout to detailed factory layout, all the way to operational management with Autodesk Construction Cloud. Magna is pleased that models can be coordinated from different points of view from the production point of view, from the factory coordination point of view, or from the building design point of view. And the workflows aren't broken as teams move from 2D methods to 3D methods or vice versa, back and forth. And best of all, they have no need to do manual data conversion, which is a huge time saving for them. Magna discovered when, you've power, when you're powered by data connectivity, a digital factory enables cross-functional coordination creates greater agility to adapt to the changing world, and gives companies a competitive edge. Only when your data flows freely among people, programs, and processes can you enable breakthrough productivity gains. So what's next? Where do all these breakthrough gains come from? Now, there's two major developments out there right now that people are working with. One is the digital twin more mature, and the other is artificial intelligence, which is in the throes of the hype cycle right now. I'm sure all of you are feeling that. So let's start with the digital twin. Your digital twin is a virtual representation of your entire operation, a dynamic, up-to-date digital replica giving an overview of the entire production process so you can see the potential impact of every single decision. So I'm curious. How many of you have a digital twin of your factory? Oh, that's a lot smaller number than I expected. I mean, this is the digital factory conference after all. Uh, OK. All right, well, I suspect that will change over the next couple of years. So whether you're using a digital twin or not, I'm pretty sure you're aware of what it is. Customers like you are already integrating their fully coordinated BIM data into our digital tw twin technology, Autodesk Tandem, to create an accurate building replica, replica that also includes factory management data, data such as warranties, installation dates, manufacturer information, much, much more, all the things that actually help you run, manage, and understand the factory. Now, 
empowered with this information, you can continually optimize a facility for its entire life cycle. Operations are responsible for 80 to 90% of a building's cost, 80 to 90%. Okay. A digital factory is designed to reduce those costs by delivering deep insights. Now, I'll give you an example. The European Union has set a goal to become climate neutral by 2050. All right, so European manufacturers are scrambling to understand, okay, how do you do this? Now, achieving this goal is going to require a lot of integrated digital platforms that allow manufacturers to accurately predict how much product will be produced each year and the associated carbon footprint. Now, knowing this information beforehand will enable them to plan for associated costs, or better yet, give them visibility to reduce their overall carbon footprint. They can't do this without a digital pipeline. Now, digital twins are also going to produce invaluable data and have a complementary relationship with artificial intelligence. As more useful data is input into the system from sources like user feedback, IoT devices, and operations, AI gets better at generating relevant insights. And just as digital transformation represents a cataclysmic shift in the manufacturing industry over the last decade, so too will AI in the next decade. It will play an integral role in our quest to do more with less. Today, there really are more things that need to be made and built than there are people, money, and material to make them. AI can help address the talent shortage by automating away the non-creative work that drags your productivity down and will allow you to focus on the tasks that matter. And our products continue to get smarter as they continue to get smarter. The amount of data produced will continue to grow. In fact, it's estimated that global data creation will grow to more than 180 zettabytes by 2025. Now, I'm an engineer scientists studied all this stuff. I don't know what a zettabyte is, but it's got a Z in it. So it means it's got to be really big because it's at the end of the alphabet, right? So it's clear we are overwhelmed by data. And AI will be key to understanding that data so that you can surface important insights from it. And in the not so distant future, we'll see AI begin to augment our work it won't replace or constrain the creativity of designers or engineers or your ability to explore. Instead, what it's going to do is it's going to make design tools more accessible to a wider range of talented people while providing a foundation that allows for greater freedom of exploration and expression. If an AI on a prompt can create an initial 3D model, and continues to refine that 3D model over time, that offers users more bandwidth to solve problems, collaborate, and iterate. That helps professionals work more effectively on more projects, solving capacity problems. It's going to drive down the cost of an individual product, and it's going to enable people to do more with less. So amid uncertainty and disruption, which isn't going away, it certainly can be hard to embrace new ways of doing things. You're just trying to survive. Changing your processes is, is not necessarily where your head's at right now. But if you remain stagnant, you really risk being left behind. Now, nobody's saying it's easy. Believe me, I've been through several journeys of disruption. I know it's not easy, and mistakes will be made, and things will have to change as you go. But embracing disruption and digital transformation can make you more connected, more efficient, more agile, and ultimately more resilient to the inevitable shocks that are going to be out there. So at Autodesk, we're not just making incremental changes to the tools you use today. We're creating a whole new way to design and make, powered by capabilities that will make you more connected, more efficient, and more agile today, while getting you where you need to be tomorrow. Thank you for your time.